Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining this talk. Uh, my name is Alex, and together with my colleague Jana, we are going to walk you through a tutorial uh, about how to use Rust on the Microbit version 2 to build a greenhouse controller. Um, this is a completely live session, even though it's recorded. So um, any small problems, we'll try to correct them on the way. Um, that being said, thank you for joining. Joanna, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Alex. Hi, everybody. So in this uh, tutorial, we said that we'll be using Rust to program the greenhouse. How will we be using Rust is a bit different because it won't be used at the application layer. We will integrate Rust as, uh, at the operating system layer. And this means that we will use a special operating system called TOC. It is a new operating system. It is designed for embedded devices. And it, as the quote here says, it is designed to run multiple concurrent applications in a secure manner on uh, microcontrollers that have very low capabilities. A few details about TOC. It is an open source operating system. It is a pre preemptive embedded operating system. So as I said, it runs uh, multiple applications at once. It uh, supports Cortex-M and RISC-V MCUs. And it also is one of the few embedded operating systems that uses the memory protection unit that implements this. The kernel space and the user space are separate. So we have uh, the kernel and then we have the applications. And this is a bit different as most the operating systems embed the kernel and the user space. And it is capable to run different applications. The applications can be uh, developed in uh, programming languages such as C or Rust. And the applications don't need to be fully secure because the security is guaranteed at the kernel level. The kernel and the drivers are written completely in Rust. Okay, now to have a, a more clear image, a clearer image of the architecture, we have here a picture. Uh, at the lowest layer, we have the hardware. On top of the hardware, we have the drivers, that, the drivers that we know for, uh, that are regular drivers, but they are written in Rust. And here we can also write some unsafe Rust code because it wouldn't be possible otherwise. On top of this, we have the hardware interface layer. And through this, we have um, a way of communicating between the drivers and the capsules. The capsules being uh, over, uh, they are located over the, on top of the hardware interface layer. Capsules are also some kind, of, they are similar to drivers, but they are higher level drivers. These drivers consume the services that are provided by the lower level drivers. And this is the kernel. And then we have the applications. We have different applications running uh, at the same time. We see we have some applications that are written in Rust, some that are written in C. Some applications may do some uh, malicious stuff, like we see that we have an application that has that while one. Okay, and for the hardware part, we will use a micro bit. We have here some pictures of the micro bit and you will also see it a bit uh, later. It is an educational device built by BBC, but it, also, it is also quite powerful for more advanced stuff. The main advantage is that it has a hardware deb uh, debugger integrated into it. We have those, uh, you can see that we have there the NXP KL27Z. This is the uh, debugger. And then we also have some uh, peripherals, like we have an LED matrix. We have several uh, sensors, buttons, and all those stuff that we can use to build our greenhouse. Okay. Now um, we have the talk operating system and we have talk loader. Talk loader is like an app store built especially for talk. It is uh, tool used to manage the talk applications, and we will use it to manage our talk applications. It uses TAB files. These are talk files, talk specific files, and we will discuss about this a bit later. It is written in Python and it is implemented for a couple of boards. It's still, uh, it is work in progress and it still needs implementation. So if you want to contribute to it, 
you are more than welcome. And we will use it to deploy the applications on our device. This is basically what it does. To be able to use the talk loader, we need a special uh, bootloader. And this is called talk bootloader. And we can see it in this picture at the, lo at the lowest uh, layer. It is called, we have their talk bootloader. Uh, to, so we first need to flash this uh, talk bootloader on our device. This is how we will upload our firmware on the device. For this, we download the bootloader and, the, and then we run the command make flash bootloader. We will see it in action. Once we have the bootloader, the talk bootloader, we can use talk loader to upload our kernel and our applications. And we can see that we have separately the kernel and the applications. For deploying the kernel, we can use the make flash command. This runs on top of OpenOCD. And what it does, it deletes all the applications on our device and it flashes the kernel and only the kernel. We can also use make program. This will deploy a bundle with the talk kernel and the applications. This is a bit different. And then if we want to deploy only applications on their own, we have the talk loader install command. Okay. As for our project, we have here two, um, uh, an, pro an example of a project structure that is built for two different devices. So this project structure can be used also for a microbit and for a Raspberry Pi device, but we will focus on the microbit part. At the lower layer, we have the uh, kernel. So we have the folder talk where the kernel is located. Then on top of it, we have libtalk-c. This is the C user space library that we can use. Then we have the folder that is specific to the board that we are going to use that contains all the board implementation. And in our case, we need the microbit v2 because this is what we are going to use. And we have a drivers folder where we can develop our custom drivers. So this folder for now is empty. At the application layer, we have an example app. This is an application example, the simplest hello world uh, application that we can run. And we can modify it. And we can also add some other applications and deploy them on the device. And then we have drivers. These are the libraries that we can also implement for the drivers that we have. So the drivers is right now empty. And if we create some drivers at the kernel level, then at the application level, we will also write a user space library for that driver. One thing mentioning worth mentioning here, Joanna, is that um, technically TOC allows you to write applications in Rust as well, but um, TOC 2.0 has just been released and the Rust user space library is not yet compatible with this one. So for this tutorial, we will limit ourselves to writing applications in C, but most probably somewhere in the near future, users will be able to uh, leverage the Rust user space library. Um, a few words about applications. And if you're familiar with uh, operating systems, this might be strange. So at the lower level, we have the kernel and above the kernel, we have the applications. One thing that is completely different from TOC and other operating systems is that application, each application has its own memory space. And due to the fact that TOC provides memory protection, applications are not able to escape this memory space. Now, in order to be able to detect uh, a stack overflow um, error, the stack is placed on the bottom of the memory. So in usual applications on Linux, for instance, the stack would be on the top of the memory and the heap would be below the stack. In case of talk, um, to be able to detect uh, a stack overflow and due to the fact that microcontrollers do not have a memory, complicated memory management unit, the, the stack has been, move, has been moved to the bottom. On top of the stack, we have the data. So that means global variables. And then we have the, fee, the heap. An important thing is the grant. The grant is a special memory region that, is, that lives inside the uh, application's memory, but is only accessible to the kernel. This is where capsules or drivers are able to allocate memory for each um, application. 
Um, talk, uh, as Joanna said earlier, does not bundle the applications inside the kernel. So most um, embedded operating systems like FreeRTOS or Zephyr will build a single file containing the kernel and the applications. This is not the case of TOC. So TOC has the separate kernel and has basically executable files. Now these executable files are not ELF files like in Linux, but are TBF files or TOC binary formats. Consider them as simple application files, executable files that contain the code and some additional headers that are needed by the kernel to be able to load the application. Several TBF files can be bundled into a tab file or top application bundle. And so this allows you to distribute top applications because at the time of compile, you have no idea on which platform, on which microcontroller this application will run. The application is compiled completely separate from the kernel. But depending on the microcontroller that the application will run, the architecture might be different. So within a talk application bundle, we have several TBF files, so several uh, executable files, usually for the ARM architectures and for the RISC-V architectures. Together with these TBF files, we still have a manifest file that um, provides information about the bundle. This is very similar to what Apple does with IPA files that run on different iPhone um, platforms. If we take a closer look to the TBF file or the talk executable file, it is composed out of three um, components. One is the TBF header, and these are some headers that the kernel uses to load the application. The actual application code, so text and data, and then we have some padding that is necessary to obey the memory uh, protection unit rules. So this padding is not exactly a uh, padding to four bytes, but it's rather a padding to the power of two, usually for the Cortex M. For the RISC V, this is not so restrictive. So this padding makes it possible to um, separate applications and run them in separate memory protection zones. If we look at the headers, the header is actually formed out of a TBF base header, which is displayed here, which has the version, the header size, and the checksum, and a few flags, and then followed by several TLV elements, which are typed length and value elements. These TLV elements give you the application name, the amount of memory that the application needs, the stack size, so on and so forth. Uh, we will inspect these TBF files a little bit later using TalkLoader. Um, thank you for uh, bearing with us with this presentation. And now let's get to the demo. I will switch here to my uh, Visual Studio code. And you can see I have here the exact project structure that Jana has described earlier. We have here Talk, which is a link to the Talk 2.0 release, and libtalkc, which is a link to the C library, which is version 2.0. Uh, it might not be the newest version of Talk. So at the time of the presentation, most probably Talk will have some commits after the 2.0 release, but this is a stable release and we will use this for this example. We have the kernel folder and the applications folder. Uh, one thing that we forgot to mention is how to get this um, folder structure. So if you go on GitHub and we will provide the link in the description while it being embedded IoT, while you think embedded IoT, uh, we have here the talk project uh, repository, which is a very good template that you can use in building your own uh, talk project. So all that you need to do is to go to this link and say, use this template and GitHub will already um, try to make a new repository from you out of this template. Then you just have to clone this repository and you're good to go. Okay, I'll just close this one and go back to my repository. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's try to compile it. So uh, we will go to kernel drivers and go to microbit v2. So this is basically what we will do in the console. And in order to compile talk, we will simply run make. Please make sure that you have Rust and make installed. All the other tools will be installed when you run make. Don't worry about the Rust version. Again, um, make will update it for you. 
Uh, usually compilation takes more, but we already compile, pre compiled this version of TOC for microbit. And it says it has about 126 kilobytes. And this is the kernel. Okay, so first of all, let's upload it to the microbit. And for that, we will run make flash bootloader. This will download the bootloader for, for the, sorry, make flash, sorry, bootloader. That should be. This will download the bootloader and flash it to the device. In order to use this command, you need open OCD, open OCD, um, and this will be needed to directly access the board. Now, if everything worked fine, I will take a look at my micro bit. And what I need to do, if you look at the micro bit, is press the A button and hold it. And I don't know if this is visible. So I'm pressing the A button here, and at the same time, I'm pressing reset. What you can see here is that the uh, LED for the microphone has been lit up, and this means that the board is in bootloader mode. Now, if you, you will use talk loader, uh, talk loader, we can ask some information about the board. So talk loader info, and it's reading. So what we can actually see is that the microbit has been contacted. It works. Uh, it has no applications installed and it has no attributes installed. Uh, if this does not work for you, uh, because some versions of OpenOCD don't allow you to communicate very well with the board, another thing that you can do is press again bottom A, reset the board to place it into bootloader mode. You can see the LED blinking, uh, not blinking, lit up. And I will just write talk loader info and minus minus serial. This will make sure that talk loader will use talk bootloader and not different methods to communicate with the board. It will ask us which is the USB port, and this is my USB port. Uh, it needs to be something with BBC. So we're pressing four, it's reading. And as you can see, it is able to uh, give us more information. So we have a microbit V2 board. It's a Cortex M4 processor. This is the bootloader hash, and it has absolutely no applications on the board. Okay, so let's flash the kernel. For that, we will make, make program minus minus serial. Once again, the minus minus serial is necessary to be perfectly compatible with what you have. If it works without minus minus serial, just go ahead and use it. So once again, press A, press the reset on the back. You can see the LED and let's go. Oh, something, oh, sorry, minus minus serial. Sorry, this is not top loader directly. So just make program should be fine. Okay, it's compiling and in a few seconds, we should be able to uh, see it on the board. It's flashing. Okay, my board is flashing here. Now that we have run these two commands, we should be able to see talk running on the board. We will open a new terminal here and we will say talk loader listen. This will open a serial console to the board and will give us access to it. Again, it asks us about the serial port. So we will select the BBC. And um, just to make sure that talk runs, I will simply reset my board and press the reset button on the back. There you go. And as you can see, we have initialization complete uh, entering main loop. Now, even though that this is not really visible, talk has a console where you can run commands. So if we write help, we can see it says, welcome to the process console. Valid comments are help, status, list, stop, start, fault, process, and kernel. Okay, so status will give us the status of the operating system at this moment. It has zero active processes, no time slice expirations. If we write list, it will show us a list of processes that run, but we have no process running yet. And if we write kernel, we can see the version of the kernel. So we can see we have top 2.0. Um, this is the memory region occupied by the kernel. So everything seems to be okay.
Good. So we'll just leave Talkloader running. That's okay. And let's upload a simple application that will write hello world. For this, we will exit this folder and we will enter the applications folder and use example app. So let's open it. And this is a simple C file. It should be super um, comfortable with it. Uh, it has STD IO, it prints hello world and uses some driver action because we have no driver, no custom driver. We'll simply delete these ones and just leave hello world. Uh, once again, because we have no external drivers, we will also um, comment external libraries in the make file. All that we need to do is to hit make. This will compile. Um, the first compilation takes a bit longer because it compiles the libc library, so the, not the libc, the libtalkc library, so the whole user space library for talk, and it actually compiles it four times. Uh, it compiles it once for Cortex M0, M3, M4, and M7. So um, we will have to wait a little bit. Don't worry, this is done only once. Um, the second time you'll compile an app, this will work flawlessly and immediately. Okay, so um, we'll just wait a little bit. Okay, now as you can see, it has built four, uh, four uh, iterations of our application for Cortex M0, M3, M4, and M7. Now, the tab file is located into the build folder, so ls build, and we can see example app tab. Okay, so if we run talk loader, inspect tab, inspect tab, um, it will actually search all the tab files in the current folder and its subfolders. It will find our example app tab and will say, hey, this is the build date. This is the minimum kernel version that we need. This is 2.0. Um, and it contains these architectures. And if we want further details, we can select one architecture and it will give us several details about the application. Because the, um, the micro bit is a Cortex M4, we will simply use two. And as you can see, it will say, this is version two of the TBF. This is the size of the header. Uh, the app is enabled. It's not sticky. That means it can be deleted easily from the board. Um, it needs at least four kilobytes of RAM, almost four kilobytes. It's called example app and it needs the kernel 2.0. Now let's load it. We just hit talk loader, uh, install. And first of all, we'll take the board, um, press the A button and press the reset button on the back. Again, the microphone should be on. And we'll say talk loader install install, uh, install minus minus serial to make sure it's compatible. And again, it asks us which is the serial port. We'll say four. And it starts installing the application on the board. Um, let's see what happens. Um, from time to time, the board jumps out of bootloader mode. So um, make sure your LED is still on. If not, press the A button and again, press reset on the back. As you can see, it started flashing and it should be on. Now, if we go to the second terminal, um, let's reset the board one more time. We can see it displayed hello world. If we run list, we can see we have one application which is called hello world. It has pit number zero. It performed 13 system calls. It's yielded right now. So it's basically stopped. It waits for events. And yeah, we used it. If we write status, we can see we have one active process and none of them have uh, expired their time slices. If we write process example app, we can get information about the process's memory and we can see it used 240 kilobytes of its, uh, sorry, bytes of its 2K stack. It uses 500 bytes of data. Its heap is about 1.5 kilo and um, its grant space, so the kernel has allocated one kilobyte in its grant region. So more or less, this is what it does. Um, 
Okay, we can stop the process. Example app. Oops. Now it's stopped. So if we run list, it should be stopped. And we should be able to restart example. But nothing happens because, I mean, we stopped it. We started it again, but it can't continue because it just wrote the printf and that's it. Okay, now let's install another app on the device. And let's go, um, actually no, let's, uh, let's make it do something different and let's blink a LED. So we include led.h and let's say, not inst instead of hello world, we'll say we have present the LEDs. Um, let's see like this in LEDs, um, LED count, I hope it's like that, LEDs. This will basically tell us the number of LEDs available and this should be tell us how many LEDs we have. We'll run make once again and talk loader install. For my board jumped out of bootloader again. It flashes the app and if we reset the board one more time, we have 25 LEDs, which is actually correct because we have an LED matrix. I'm not sure I can make this visible here. Okay, so um, let's again list the processes. It stopped, it performed 14 system calls and it stopped. Let's blink one of the LEDs. We'll say while two, or let's see, it will be while one. Let's say um, LED on for LED number zero, uh, delay a few milliseconds, let's say 500 milliseconds, LED off, maybe off, and delay another 500 milliseconds. For the delay, we need to include the timer. Okay. Let's again compile the application and install it again. It's installing and it actually works. So if you can see here, the application is yielded, but if we continuously run list, we can see it performs system calls. If you look at the board, you can see the LED is flashing. Um, if we stop the application, say let's stop the example app, you can see the LED is not flashing anymore. And if we start the app, you can actually see the LED continues to flash. Okay, so um, this is the applications in talk. Now, uh, let's try to write some Rust code and see how we can perform um, and write a simple driver and then go towards our greenhouse. Um, we'll go into the micro bit, uh, sorry, into the kernel and into drivers. Now into drivers, we have one single library, uh, one single file, which is called librs. And this allows us to export um, other files. We will add here a driver, we'll say greenhouse rs. And we will say, hey, public module greenhouse.rs. Sorry, public mod greenhouse. Okay, so let's write a driver. Um, talk drivers are located in talk, capsules, SRC, and here you can see several drivers. We will take the easiest one, which is LED. It has some documentation and it has some kernel imports. Okay, so we'll take a few of the imports here and place them into our driver. So we need like this, we need command, we need kernel syscall because we need to implement system calls. We need command return and system call driver, syscall driver from there, error code and process ID from the kernel. Now to write a driver, we have to define a structure and we'll say structure greenhouse, which is completely empty. 
and we will have an implementation that is for now empty greenhouse. Of course, it needs to be a public structure, right? And in order to write a driver that exports um, commands and um, system calls to the user space, we need to implement syscall driver. So our structure needs to implement this. So what we will do is write implement syscall driver for in-house. Let's see if we can jump to the code, but we can't. So we will go into the kernel and take a look at the syscall driver trait. We'll go to talk kernel src heal not not heal sorry uh, platform Cisco, Cisco. Uh, Cisco drive here we go okay and we will say trade Cisco driver so this is the kernel Cisco driver trait talk supports three types of system calls that can be exported to the user space command which asks the kernel to do something I mean the driver to do something. Allow, which is allow read only and read write, which allows an application to share memory with the driver. Subscribe, which is automatically done by the kernel. And that means that the application can subscribe to events from a driver. And we still have a function allocate grant, which we need to implement. This is due to the subscribe system call and we won't get into details for now. So basically what we need to do is to implement this function and return an OK. So with this, we have simply created a driver for our, um, our kernel. It does nothing, but it is a valid driver. The last thing that we need to do is to give it a number because every driver in talk is represented by a number. And we'll say pub constant driver number u size will be and any custom drivers usually start at 0a so this will be our custom driver 0a001 this number can be anything but um, basically talk defines a set of standard drivers which are defined in capsules src um, and driver and it would be a good idea not to clash with one of them. So that's why we chose A, which is the smallest number bigger than zero X nine. So here we go. Okay, so let's see if this compiles. Um, we'll go back to the kernel uh, and to micro bit, and we'll just run make. Um, here we go, we have some errors and okay, yeah. It's just... Um, we need to import process error. So use process error. just here. Our micro bit um, crate automatically includes the driver crate. So in our cargo file, we have included the driver trade. And this is why when we run make in the micro bit, it actually looks at our driver here. Of course, it says, hey, we have some variables that we don't use. So let's prefix them with some underscore. And if we have some unused imports, but we'll use them in a minute. Okay, now writing this driver is the first step. The second step is to register our driver. So for this, we'll go to source, main, and this is the main file for doc. Uh, if we search here, we have a structure which is called microbit, which basically defines all the driver types that we will use. And at its end, we will say greenhouse, and we'll say it's drivers, drivers, um, greenhouse, and the greenhouse structure. Now, we have defined this driver here, the second thing is to connect it to the kernel. So defining a driver here, driver type, simply defines a value of field in a structure. We have a trait which is called system called driver lookup, which is implemented by microbit, which has only one single function where the kernel says, hey, 
if you have this driver with this number, run this function with that driver. If you don't have it, just run it with none. So as you can see, the whole function is a match and it simply matches. If the driver number matches the actual driver number, it's run, it runs the function. So we'll just add ours here. So it's drivers, um, greenhouse, and remember the driver number variable. If this fits, we will simply run it with self and greenhouse. Here we go. Next, um, we have a structure microbit and we need to initialize our driver. Now, the problem is that these drivers have to have a static lifetime. So if we do something like this, like greenhouse equals drivers, simply that structure, greenhouse, um, greenhouse, um, this will not work. I mean, we can try and we'll say greenhouse here, but this will give us an error. Oh, sorry. This needs to be um, like this. I think we have a problem here. Um, oh yeah, it needs um, a reference to it, sorry. Here we go. Now what happens um, here, If we actually ask for one, I think I mistook here the driver. I need to define a static reference in the structure. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so here, um, yeah, we have a reference. Now what happens here is, um, oops. Trade syscall driver is not implemented. It is a static reference. It should be, is we implemented it here. Did we do something wrong? Let's see. No, driver is greenhouse. Oh, of course. It's not. Now, the problem is, that if we construct the greenhouse here, its lifetime will be bound to the lifetime of the function, of the main function. The problem is we need a static one. For that, we will use the static init macro. And we will say, hey, make us a structure of this type and use this as its initializer. Now, greenhouse will be a static reference towards this to check it, We'll simply make a small error and we'll say, hey, we have greenhouse of type unit associated, attributed to a static init. Now we will get a Rust error and this will say, hey, um, sorry, uh, phone. it will say, hey, I expected unit, but I found a mutable reference to greenhouse. So this is how we know that actually static init will give us a reference. We'll delete this and delete the reference here, and we should have a driver. And it basically compiles. Rust can be rather slow in compilations. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to try to access this driver from the user space. Now drivers respond to commands. This driver does not implement any command. So even if we try to do something with it from the user space, it won't be useful. So what we need to do is to implement a command. For this, we'll go to the kernel to, um, we'll close, sorry, we'll close this one. We'll close the capsules and go back to the kernel and go to Cisco. And we'll just copy command. So what happens here is the following. The function command implements commands that are supplied by the user space. Each command has a number, which can be anything that's 
related to the driver, the driver decides what column zero, one, two, three is, and has two values as parameters. And extra, it has a process ID, the process ID of the process that has issued the command. By default, all commands return no support because they are not implemented. So what we'll do, we'll say match command number, and we'll say like this. If it's command zero, we will return command return success. If it's anything else, we'll say, hey, command return failure. And we'll say error code, no support. I mean, we don't know what you want from us. Now, Tox standard says that command number zero has to return success every time. This is the way that an application can detect if a driver is present or not. It will issue command number zero, and if it returns success, that means that that driver is present in talk. Okay, let's build this one more time. And as you can see, it builds and it should work. Now, going back to our application, we'll go to the drivers folder. Now that we have now that we have a greenhouse driver, let's create a user space for it. So we'll say we we'll have greenhouse dot h and greenhouse dot c. Um, we'll say pragma once, and we'll say um, the first function is boolean which says like greenhouse is okay. It takes no parameters and it will return if greenhouse is present. We'll include uh, a std bool so that this pool is available. And its counterpart, um, we'll say include uh, greenhouse.h and we'll implement the function. So what we will do, we'll say, okay, we need talk. So we'll include talk. This is the talks library. And we'll say command. So like, no, no, sorry. Uh, command return. Uh, I can't remember this by heart, but we'll just go to the talk C and the talk and we'll go to uh, talk.h and we'll search for command and it's a syscall return t okay let's go back to our file here and say okay turn is equal to command command receives four arguments the driver number so we'll say um in driver number, command number, I'll say command zero, and two extra arguments, we'll, we'll just use zero. Remember the driver number that we defined inside the driver? This is the same, so we need to define command driver number to zero, zero a zero 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 one. Okay, and we'll say like this, if red dot type equals call success this means we return true actually we don't need to return it we just return if this is true this will tell us if the greenhouse driver is present once again we issue command number zero to this driver what this will do it will send the command to the kernel the kernel will go to main.rs i mean we'll go empirically uh, to main.rs, to Cisco lookup, uh, and we'll call this function with driver. This function will have a match, and this driver number, if it matches with our driver, this function will call the function f with our driver. Consequently, the kernel will get a reference to the driver and call the command function. We will receive here the command number and we will execute it. 
let's add some debug. Actually, no, we'll not add debugging yet. And what we will do in main C now is okay, we'll just comment this out and we'll say, hey, let's check if we have the greenhouse driver. So we'll include greenhouse, that's H. And we'll say like this if greenhouse is present, in test house driver available please make sure you add the backslash n here otherwise you won't see the messages as the c library um, caches them until a new line is found the greenhouse driver is not available let's say hey error we have an error okay um I think we're good to go. First of all, let's go to the applications. So we'll exit the kernel. We'll go to, X to applications, drivers. We'll run make to build our driver. Actually, we build our driver library and then we'll go back to example app. In the example app make file, we need to um, uncomment this external libraries because we will depend on drivers and we'll run make. We have a brand new file. Now, um, let's upload it. Loader, install, minus minus serial, just to be sure. I'll put my board into bootloader mode. And this is number four. Once again, in bootloader, it runs. And here we go. And this is strange. We added the driver, but it says it's not available. What we did not do is we did not update the kernel. So if we don't update the kernel from the micro bit, even though we compiled the kernel and compiled the app without the new kernel uploaded, the board is still running the old kernel that does not have the driver. So kernel, micro bit, make program. And here we go. Compiles the kernel, uploads it to the board, and let's see what happens. Okay, reboot the, the board and we can see greenhouse driver is available. Now, for debugging, we can do something really cool and we can follow the system calls. So if we go to doc kernel, we have a file which is called config. This allows us to enable two debug options. One is trace system calls. The second one is debug loading processes. And we'll just make trace system calls true. And then once again, We'll make program and upload the recompiled kernel to the device. This will print for every system call, whatever, uh, this will print information about every system call that has been performed. This is very similar to S trace in Linux. Let's see. Um, here we go. It's flashing. Okay. And if we reset the board, here we go. So we have initialization complete. We can see every system call that has been performed. And you can see that this is actually our command. We can detect this by this driver number here. So co command, command number zero with two zeros, it yielded success. All the others are due to the printf. So now if we hit list, we can see that this is our application. Okay, so let's make the greenhouse driver do something useful. Um, as we don't have a lot of hardware, what we will do is um, we'll say like this one is current um, heating. 
and command number two will be set um not set uh run pump control pump control water and control heating so let's say like this if we get number one command number one we'll do the following we'll say hey if r2 the first parameter is equal to one we'll start the heating else um if r2 is equal to two we'll stop the heating otherwise we don't know what you want so we'll say okay this returns command return failure and we'll say error code um i think the best is no super inval invalid so it's an invalid command for start heating what we will actually do because we don't have an actual heater we'll say hey kernel we'll import debug and we'll say we'll just print the message we'll say debug debug and we'll return command return success everything went well if we want to stop the heating we'll say hey sorry this is zero not one debug turn off there we go command return success and we will do exactly the same thing for the water control just that we'll write watering on Okay, and this will be number two, sorry. This is our new driver. So let's use it from the C. First, let's say like this, bull greenhouse, uh, what, uh, control, control. Eating, sorry. And we'll say Boolean on off. The second one will be control uh, with the boolean on off. I'll just copy them. Hey, let's put them into the C code, and we'll say once again. Um, this one will be just void. Actually, we'll, it will say if it went well or not. So greenhouse driver number command number one. And actually we'll say here, depending on on off, if on off is two, we'll send one, otherwise we'll send zero. And the second function for the heating will be exactly the same. Just that the number will be two. Okay. So first of all, let's compile our drive, um, application driver and let's compile our driver library and it works. Let's go to example app and let's do the following. Um, if the greenhouse driver is present, we'll have while one uh, greenhouse um, greenhouse control um, heating true. I will start it. We'll say hey, the heating needs to stay there for five seconds. Of course, in reality, it will be more and otherwise we'll say false and we'll just oscillate this one let's build the app and actually let's let's check if it actually works so if this works then we do the following otherwise we'll say hey um i have an error uh, yeah being Yeah. Also make uploader install minus minus serial. Select the serial port and reboot the board. Okay, um, let's actually put a delay here because this is completely this is really really fast so let's say okay if it doesn't work 30 seconds 
let's um, make, compile the app once again and install it again. There we go. Uh, okay, let's see if we can actually build it. Yep, it flashes. And what happens is the following, heating control error. We can look at the command. We set command number one, turn it on, and it says no support. Why? It says no support because we completely forgot to flash the new kernel. So we modified the driver, but we never flashed the kernel. So again, we'll make a program. This will build the kernel, flash it to the board. And as soon as the kernel is flashed, the driver recognizes these commands and should just write heater on. Um, here we go. It flashes. You can see it flashes when, um, whenever these uh, yellow LEDs flash. Now it should work. We simply reboot the board. It says heater on. As you can see, this was the result of command one and then heater off again, the result of command um, to the printf we can see. So this is the heater off. It says success, it already printed heater off. Um, I'll just take out the debugs because um, these um, clutter the screen. So let's flash the kernel one more time without those debug lines. Now, if this is a greenhouse, Usually we need to access some sensors, get some information from the greenhouse, and then decide if we need to uh, turn on the heater or stop the heater. So um, what we'll do is access some sensors in the user space. Uh, I'll wait for a few seconds so that the new driver, uh, new kernel is flashed, compiled and flashed. Um, uh, here we go. flashing. Let's see, it's done. We reboot the board, heater on, as you can see. And in the meantime, we can use the console heater off. So we just made our driver work. Okay, so let's see how we can get some sensor values and build the greenhouse. For that, we'll go to libtoxc and examples. Here we have an application which is called sensors. And if we go inside of it, we can see we have here um, several kind of sensors that we can read. And one of them is humidity and the other one, other one is temperature. So um, this is how we read the temperature. And this is how we read the humidity. Of course, there's several ways, but we'll just use it, use the simplest one. First of all, we have to decide if the humidity and the temperature drivers are present. And this is done by driver exists. Top provides us a function which is called driver exists, where if we give it a driver number, it tells us if the driver is present or not. What it actually does, it just sends command zero. So let's say for temperature and humidity, let's check this one. So we'll say, okay, in main.c, first of all, we'll check if the greenhouse driver is present. If it's present, we'll say like this, hey, um, we have temperature, we have humidity, just tell us if they exist. For that, we need to include their libraries. One is temperature.h, and the other one is humidity.h. Okay, and this should actually work. And let's say, okay, print us um, house following sensors. And backslash t, and we'll say temperature. We'll just say one or zero, it's easier. Backslash and backslash T. Oh, sorry, we don't need the space here. Maybe. I'll just say one or zero. Humidity. Backslash. Here we go. Let's compile the app. 
and let's get on with it. Since example make, oops, we have a problem. Oh, we forgot this one. These ones temperature, humidity. Okay, install. I'll we'll just install the app. Uh, it jumps out of bootloader. Okay. Here we go. Reset the board. And it says, hey, I have a temperature sensor, but I don't have a humidity sensor. So this is how you basically decide if the platform has a humidity or a temperature sensor. Well, for the micro bits, sadly, we don't have a humidity sensor. So we'll just be able to use temperature. Now, let's display the temperature then. And we'll say like this. If temperature, if you have it, let's print it. Let's say, hey, printf. Um, um, there is degrees Celsius. And we'll say um, temperature read synchronous. And we can do this like this uh, int temp value. And we'll just read temp value. Um, the temperature will give us actually in uh, hundreds of not, uh, hundreds of centigrade. So we need to divide this to a hundred. So um, here we go. We'll compile again the app and upload it once again. Here we go. It uploads. Okay. And it says 27 degrees centigrade. Um, if you want to transform it in Fahrenheit, um, that's really easy. Uh, on the other hand, we are in Europe and this is what we are accustomed with. I'm really sorry about this. And this is also in the international system. Okay, so now that we have a, a temperature sensor, let's make a simple application that will use this and say, hey, um, if we have the temperature, let's do it like this. So while one, this is our greenhouse. We will say, hey, um, if we have a temperature sensor, we check the temperature, we display it and say, hey, if um, temperature temperature value is lower than, um, let's just divide it, temp value, if temp value to 100, and then let's just use temp value here, is lower than 28, let's say, um, and the heater on. So we'll say greenhouse uh, control heater two. Else, um, let's turn the heater off because we need to save energy. And we'll say, hey, turn it off. Okay. And let's also blink an LED to say if this is um, on or off. So we'll say LED H and we'll say LED on zero. And this one will be LED. Off. Okay, and we'll just repeat this, let's say delay progress every five seconds. I mean, on a normal greenhouse, it will be more, but that I think it's fine. Now we'll see if we can actually heat up um, the micro bit. So I'll install it one, one more time. Um, let's install the app. And let's see, boot it. Okay, heater is on because it's less than 28. I'm not sure I can actually cool it or heat it up. I might not be able to do this, but technically the heater is on and you can see my LED is on. Okay. I, I um, heated it up. It says heater off and you can see there's no LED on. We try to cool it off a little bit. I'm not sure that this actually works. Um, yeah, at some time it will turn the heater off, uh, on, sorry. Yeah, it just turned off the heater. So um, here we go. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show you is this LED. Um, we control the LED from the app, but let's try to control some hardware. 
from a driver. So instead of controlling the LED here, let's make the driver control an LED. For that, we need inside the greenhouse structure, we need to get a pin. So the talk provides um, a hill, or let's say an interface to control pins, which is called GPIO. And actually the interface is called pin. So trade pin, here you go, this is trade pin. So what we will want to do is the following. We'll say, hey, this is the header pin. This will control our header. It's a static reference. Actually, we'll not make it static. We'll just say, hey, it's an A reference. To any trait, any structure that implements pin. Now, we'll make a new function here. And we'll say, hey, um, whenever you get a driver, by the way, now we have a lifetime parameter here. Anytime you get a driver, um, we need something that is A, sorry, pin is dynamic pin. This returns, actually the easiest way is to return self and it just returns greenhouse, with pin and pin. We need to import the hill, so kernel, hill, sorry, GPIO pin. And we'll just write header on and we'll say self.pin. Um, on. Sorry, set, I think. We'll set it. And um, actually, no, we don't need a pin. I'm sorry, we need an LED. So LED. We need an LED. We turn on an LED. Okay. Um, and we'll say self LED on, and here we'll say self LED off. Okay, so this is the driver. Let's say if it actually compiles, run on micro bit. We should get an error in main, but we should not get an error in the driver, and we'll still get an error because it's LED here, and this is also LED. Okay. And we are missing a lifetime here, which is like this. Here we go. Okay, of course, in main, we have a problem. This will be, this will have a lifetime and we'll say, hey, it's a static lifetime. And whenever we actually create the greenhouse, we'll say, hey, I need you to create a static one. And instead of putting the greenhouse, I will, I need new and I need an LED. So um, yeah, this will be a little bit trickier because um, LEDs on the micro bit are not simple pins and they uh, are part of an LED matrix. So for this one, I will open an example and just copy some code, uh, which will, I will briefly explain. So let's go to um, here, talk and... We'll just take a pin here. Oh, sorry, drivers, SRC. No, no, not this one. Oh, sorry. I don't need this one. I need another file, which is the main file. And we'll say like this, LED, uh, LED matrix. Uh, is, I think. No, I'm not looking at the right file. Um, sorry, once again here, my book, um, kernel, microbit, and main.rs, LEDs, yes. So, uh, LEDs, and I need this one, drivers, LED. This is it. I think so. This one. Okay, so the micro bit uses 
the LED matrix. And every LED on the micro bit is not actually an, a pin, but is controlled by two pins and an LED matrix. If you look at the LED driver, it's actually an LED matrix driver. So what we want to do is to use one single LED from that driver, from that matrix. For that, we talk provides a way of doing this. I mean, not talk library in talk. And that is in the LED matrix here. Actually, I have an example here. So if we want to use a single LED in the LED matrix, we have this code here, which is exactly for the micro bit. And this is what we we're going to do. Um, main.rs, it's here. And in the greenhouse, we need to define this LED. And we'll say, hey, I need an LED from the LED matrix that I can control. And this is a macro, which will allow me to do exactly just that. Um, and I will say, hey, from the LED matrix, which is called LED, uh, get LED zero, zero. And this is our LED. And now I can supply this to the new function LED. Here we go. Um, let's see, not found in greenhouse. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, that matrix driver. Oh, sorry. Um, LED zero zero. I over. I have overwritten one of my variables with the drivers. Here we go. LED zero zero. Here we go. Okay, let's get rid of these warnings. We never use R3 and we never use the process ID. So we'll just um, get rid of them. And we'll just say, hey, make. Okay, and then make program. We'll just upload the program on the board. Here we go. Our bolt is nice 25 degrees outside, so it needs to turn on the heater. And now it's flashing. Here we go. Um, it says heater on, and we need to reboot it. Heater on, and the LED is on. Here you can see. On the other hand, um, we can change the LED super easily. So main RS, and if we don't want LED 01, we want the LED in the middle, this is 33. We'll just uh, use the LED in the middle of the matrix. Oh, sorry, this is three. We'll just run it, compile it, flash it. It flashes it on the board. And if we reboot it, um, yeah, it seems that we have two LEDs on. Not sure why. Oh, it's LED 2.2. And let's also run the app. I think we did not upload the app anymore. So actually LED 3.3 is not right in the middle. It's three. It's in the lower uh, right corner, but I forgot to upload the new app and two LEDs are um, running. So um, let's make this one again and install. Let's uh, put the board into bootloader. And here we go, flashing the new app. And we should be good to go. And yes, we have only one LED flashing, which is LED 3.3. I'm not sure this can be seen here. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. So um, what we did today is the following. We built a driver for TOC. The driver takes commands. It's a simple driver. Command number zero just tells us the driver is available. Command number one turns on and off the heater, and comment number two turns on and off the watering system. Probably the heater will be a pin or like an LED, which is switched on and off. Then we built 
the user space part of the driver. So basically the library for the greenhouse with the two functions, and we used it in an application. Um, the application that we have built will work on any device that runs doc without any need for recompile. I mean, it's completely independent from the kernel. Uh, you can ship the tab file and somebody can load it on their board. So they don't need to compile it. You don't need the kernel. It's completely separate. Uh, this is a really basic doc tutorial uh, and it does lack a lot of explanations like how drivers exactly work, why we have wrote, written some things there. Um, but due to the short amount of time that we have, this is, um, I think, the fastest way that you can get running with doc. We strongly suggest running, uh, reading the getting started uh, 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 file in the talk repository uh, and reading uh, some tutorials that you can find in the talk repository. Um, we will also publish a book in the following year with a lot of more examples. So thank you for your attention and um, we will gladly answer any questions um, on any means where they can be asked. Thank you.